When I attended med school, I was taught that multiple sclerosis does not cause pain. They were wrong. Simply put, MS hurts. And in fact, there's multiple different kinds of pain that someone with MS can experience. In this video, I'm going to share with you how I address neuropathic pain with my MS patients. Don't turn away because that starts right now. Howdy! Thanks for learning about MS with me, Aaron Boster. In this video, I want to talk about one type of pain commonly seen in multiple sclerosis. That's neuropathic pain, or pain that comes from damage either from the brain or spinal cord, which results in a fake message going to the brain, telling the brain that a part of the body is hurting, except it's not. And so this can manifest in a lot of yucky ways. You can see pain with eye movements during an optic neuritis. When someone has a transverse myelitis, in other words, inflammation of the spinal cord, they can get the MS hug. They can get Lermite's phenomenon where they bend their neck and feel electricity shooting down their legs. Because of damage to these central structures, they can have an arm or a hand or a leg that feels like it's burning or feels like it's being stuck in ice water or feels like it's being crushed or feels like the, the touch is like sandpaper, it doesn't feel right. Neuropathic pain is invisible, and it's super frustrating, and it's treatable. So let's spend some time talking about different ways that we can treat neuropathic pain in MS. Let's jump in. Obviously, the intention of this video is not to give you medical advice. I can't diagnose or treat you over the interwebs like that. It's instead to share with you kind of my thought process and how I treat my MS patients for neuropathic pain, and hopefully gives you some information and some discussion points to talk to your doctor or your clinician about your neuropathic pain. So there are a lot of lotions and potions that we use to try to manage neuropathic pain. Let's start with pain associated with an acute uh, MS attack. An example would be optic neuritis. People with an optic neuritis, when the optic nerve becomes inflamed, lose vision. But in addition to that, it hurts like the dickens when they move their eye left to right or up and down. And when you give corticosteroids, IV steroids or super high dose oral steroids to quell that inflammation, it helps return the vision and it helps remove the pain. So high dose corticosteroids like solumedrol is a way of treating some of the neuropathic pain from MS, specifically related to an MS attack. Another example would be when someone has a transverse myelitis where they have inflammation of the spinal cord and it gets swollen. And that can cause a host of symptoms, weakness, numbness, bowel and bladder problems, and pain. You can have a leg that feels like it's on fire. When you give high dose steroids to quell the inflammation, it returns the neurological functions and the pain ameliorates also. What about chronic neuropathic pain? where someone constantly feels like their hand's burning, or their leg is in a vice, or their arm is on fire, or it feels like it's freezing at times. This is all too common in MS. And we use two different classes of medicines most commonly to treat this. One class are the seizure medicines, and the other one are certain antidepressants. And they're used what we call off-label, but effectively to treat neuropathic pain. So if I think about the seizure medicines for a second, there's lots of medicines like Tegretol or Trileptol that are used first line for certain kinds of MS pain, like Lermite's phenomenon or trigeminal neuralgia. Other seizure medicines are commonly used like Gabapentin, Neurontin, or its cousin Pregabalin, Lyrica. These are used arguably more for treating neuropathic pain than they are for seizures, actually. Other seizure medicines can be very helpful, like Topiramate, Topamax, which actually has an indication for pain and can be easily dosed just at night or twice during the day. Oh, I left out Lamictal, Lamotrigine, which is another great anti-seizure medicine that I use to treat neuropathic pain. So there's a host of these seizure medicines that can be very effective. Now, of course, all these medicines have side effects, and that's not what this video is about. And of course, you have to talk to your doctor about what's right for you. I just want to share with you, we have a lot of different options that we can reach for. Oh, if we turn our attention now to antidepressants, there's really uh, two classes that I think about within the antidepressant group. The first are tricyclic antidepressants. These are kind of old school medicines like Pamelor and Elevil. And I don't use them as much, particularly when people start to get a little older in age, because they can contribute to sedation and cog fog. 
Cymbalta is a newer medicine which has antidepressant properties and pain properties. And I commonly say, if you show me someone who has chronic neuropathic pain, I'll show you someone who's sad about it. And so I feel like I killed two birds with one stone. There are others, but I'm trying to simply to give you the examples that there's a bunch of medicines within these classes that can really help treating neuropathic pain. What about some other adjunctive therapies? I've had uh, moderately good success using various topical treatments. So this could be a lidocaine patch, or a lidocaine cream, or a compounded pain cream, which oftentimes has lidocaine and Neurontin and maybe Elevil and such in it. There are topical cannabis-based uh, creams, including THC and CBD. I've been a medical marijuana recommender in the state of Ohio for a few years now. And having worked with a bunch of people impacted by MS, I can share that at least at my clinic, we've noticed that medical cannabis certainly helps with neuropathic pain. Many of my patients have found that using an edible can help with decreasing neuropathic pain in the background, or using vaped or tincture of cannabis can help with acute pains. Now, in some cases, they use this adjunctively in addition to some of the pills that I described, or in some cases, that's their only form of neuropathic pain treatment. Real quick before we go on, do me a favor. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Also, if you haven't yet, please consider subscribing to the YouTube channel. It's free and it helps teach the YouTube algorithm that you really like this content. And that helps push it out so more people can learn and up their MS game. Thank you. The options don't stop there and we can enlist the assistance of pain doctors and we can explore things like spinal cord stimulators. A spinal cord stimulator, we joke, is medicine by Edison, where they snake these two thin wires kind of on either side of your spine, hook it up to a battery, and you can turn it on, and it passes electricity across your spinal cord and short circuits pain signals. And you can adjust the computer so that it addresses different parts of the body. Another successful way of treating really bad neuropathic pain is a pain pump. So I have a lot of patients I care for that have baclofen pumps. This is the same device, the same pump, but it's used by pain doctors to put in different medicines that treat pain. And you can microdose narcotics that way. There's even a medicine called zaconitide toxin or prealt, which is a really fascinating medicine that treats neuropathic pain. And beyond that, there are other things that pain doctors can do. If you'd like to learn more tricks and tips to up your game in MS, Click the video that's on your screen right now. And until my next Monday morning video or my next monthly live stream, or even better yet, the next time I see you at the Boster Center for MS, this is Aaron Boster saying be safe and take care.